fully guided surgical kit is used with the Paltop Digital Surgical Guide. The Paltop Digital Surgical Guide is fabricated by a Paltop Digital Planning Center. The Paltop Digital Planning Center creates the surgical plan using the doctor's prescription and final authorization from the doctor. The surgical plan requires CT scan data and intraoral scan data or model data. This is the protocol for a surgery with the Paltop fully guided surgical system. The surgical guide is tried in, verifying seating through the windows in the guide. A crestal incision is made, preserving keratinized tissue. Alternatively, a combined tissue punch pilot drill may be used to perform flapless surgery. There is a narrow and wide tissue punch corresponding to the wide or narrow sleeve in the surgical guide. A minimal full thickness reflection is done. A device called the DGS or Digital Guidance Sleeve is used to guide the contra angle during the drilling procedure. The DGS is inserted into the specially designed contra angle. There is a narrow and wide DGS to choose from. The wide DGS is used for the wide sleeve in the guide and the narrow DGS for the narrow sleeve. The short pilot drill is inserted into the DGS and the contra angle latch is closed securing the DGS and drill. Be sure both the DGS and drill are seated completely prior to closing the latch. Position the DGS into the correct implant number sleeve and drill until the DGS bottoms out on the drill guide. The DGS must enter the drill guide sleeve before the drill tip touches bone. The initial pilot drilling will create a one to three millimeter deep osteotomy as a starting point for the full length drills. The drill length is indicated on the drilling report. It will be 20, 25, or 30 millimeters. 20 millimeter drills are indicated by a brown band on the drill shank. 25 millimeters are indicated by a purple band, and 30 millimeters are indicated by a silver band. The next drill in the sequence is the 2.0 slash 2.4 millimeter step drill. This is the first drill that drills to the final depth. To make drilling easier, you can elect to start with a shorter drill and then advance to the final indicated drill length. For example, the drilling report may say that the drilling length is 25 millimeters, which is a purple banded drill, but you can start with a 20 millimeter brown banded drill, then deepen the osteotomy using the 25 millimeter purple banded drill.
rotational movement of the contra angle helps advance the drill. The drilling sequence is now completed by choosing the next diameter shaped drill, which is the 3.25 millimeter drill using the same color series. Be sure to remove the bone in the drill flutes, as this bone may impair the drill from cutting and advancing. After completing the 3.25 mm diameter osteotomy, the next drill used is the 3.75 mm drill in the same color series. Next is the 4.2 millimeter drill. Drilling is completed when you reach the final drill for the implant chosen and bone type. In this case, a 4.2 millimeter advanced plus implant is being used and therefore the 4.2 millimeter diameter drill is the final shape drill to be used. The drilling report indicates the implant size. The final shape drill used is according to this implant diameter. The drill sizes are indicated on the drill shank. The guide is now removed and an implant try-in is inserted to verify the final implant depth. The implant try-in kit is not included in the fully guided kit. When a 5 mm diameter drill is to be used, for example for a 5 mm implant, it is used directly in the contra angle and sleeve without the DGS. A countersink is used only if there is very dense cortical bone. Proper countersinking depth is determined by looking at the offset number on the drilling report. The countersink has numbers from 4 to 16. Although the numbers will not be visible while the countersink is spinning, the depth can be controlled by counting the appropriate number of broad black bands to the offset number. The guide is now reinserted and the countersink that corresponds the 4.2 millimeter diameter implant, red, is inserted without the DGS into the drill guide sleeve. The countersink should only be used when there is dense cortical bone and then very judiciously. Even in dense bone, consideration should be given to only lightly touching the bone.
there is a countersink corresponding to each diameter implant which is color coded. Blue 3.25, green 3.75, red 4.2, yellow 5.0. The 3.25 and 3.75 countersinks are used directly in the narrow sleeve. The 4.2 and 5 are used directly in the wide sleeve. The osteotomy should be irrigated as in all conventional procedures. The contra-angle key adapter is inserted into the contra-angle. The implant key is chosen and inserted into the contra-angle key adapter. The implant key is chosen according to narrow sleeve or wide sleeve, implant connection, NPPCA or SP, and the key offset number. The key offset number corresponds to the long, medium, and short keys. The key offset number is indicated on the drilling report. The short key is offset numbers 8 through 10. The medium key is offset 8 through 14. The long key is offset 8 through 18. The implant key is seated completely into the implant. The implant is securely removed from the vial. The implant is seated into the osteotomy through the drill guide sleeve. The implant motor is set to 15 RPM and 30 Newton centimeter torque, set as a minimal insertion torque. If the implant rotation stops prior to complete seating, the torque level may be raised. The offset number shown on the drilling report is indicated on the implant key by the line in the middle of the number. The flat side of the implant key corresponds to the flat of the hex of the implant connection. The vertical lines on the top of the implant key correspond to the middle of the flat of the implant hex. The final seating of the implant may be done with the torque ratchet on the implant key. The implant key is removed. If the key is tight in the guide, the guide can be removed with the implant key. An ISQ measurement of 80 demonstrates excellent implant stability. The ISQ pin is removed and the final visual inspection of the implant is done. The healing screw or an appropriate height and width healing abutment is selected and inserted for a two or one stage surgery. Simple interrupted sutures are placed. The healing abutment can be seen to appropriately support the soft tissue while preserving the keratinized tissue. The post-operative x-ray confirms complete seating of the healing abutment and records the immediate post-operative relationship of the implant to bone interface. For more information, please visit our website.